Hi friends, it's me, Trisha, with Becoming Me. It's just another Mask Monday. <laughs> All right. You want to do a mask and learn knit stitch and purl stitch? Then stick around. Hi friends, it's me. Welcome back. I just wanted to check in with you and see how you're doing with learning to knit. I'm going to show you my finished object at the end. I finished that clapicus, however you say it. Whoa, this is messy. I've got the Spa Life Sugar and Rose Hip Hydrating Facial Mask. Because I feel like, oh, sorry, reaching. I feel like I could use some hydration with this crazy weather. First off, I want to say I'm really hoping that where you are, you are warm and you have power and you're safe. I'm sorry for all the struggles that people are having right now in states that aren't really prone to cold weather or used to having cold weather, right? Okay, let's do this blind again. Let's see. Oh, wow. That is really rosy. Oh, dear. I learned from last time to keep my mouth kind of closed, my eyes kind of closed at first so that I don't, oh dear, drip it into my eyes. Mm-hmm, it's really gooey. I think it might be safe to open my eyes. What do you think? I wish I could hear you. All right, I see this is the open part. Oh, I did it. Yay, yay me. Okay, so this one has to stay on for 15 minutes. Feels nice, it smells nice. It doesn't have much of a hole. So, hmm. since I finished that project, I wanted to, hold on please. I don't know why my phone doesn't recognize me. Really? <laughs> Set a timer for 15 minutes. Okay, 15 minutes on the clock. Okay, since I finished that other project, I want to start Hermione socks. This is the Hermione sock. I mean, I know it looks big because it's not like your traditional socks that you get in the store that are have elastic in the um in with the thread so but these are more like a boot sock and when i make these usually they go to my circus girl she takes these so i wanted to make another pair of socks get a pair of socks on the on the needles but today i thought we'd go over again how to do that knitted cast on and then i'll show you the knit stitch which you'll be able to whiz right through because you did the knitted cast on and I'll show you the pearl stitch so we can make a little swatch and sew up the sides, maybe put our phone in it or just something fun or maybe make a coaster for our cups of coffee. What do you think? Look, I just got this in one of my boxes. So I have a couple hauls coming up too that I need to do. I went to Tractor Supply and got a bunch of chicken stuff. So fun. And I also went to Dollar Tree and found some knitting books there. I have some things there from there. And I went to Goodwill. So those are all going to be coming up. All right. Let's get started with the knit stitch and hope that this does not drip into my eyes so that I can finish having this on my face because it feels really nice and it smells good. Okay. I'm going to turn you around. Okay. So this part is going to go kind of quick because... We did this on the first video, how to do the slip knot. And how to cast on the knitted cast on. Oh dear, I made that one too tight. Hold on. So we're gonna speed this up so that it doesn't take up too much time. Ooh, how did I do this last time? Here we go. Alrighty, I guess it's going to take me a minute to get used to this again. Here we go. All right, so 
Let's cast on like 15 stitches. 13, 14, and here's our 15. Okay, so what we're gonna do is have stockinette stitch, because we're gonna do knit and purl. We're gonna start knitting. So we're gonna do the same thing that we did for the knitted cast on. We're putting from the left to the right through the first loop, wrapping our yarn or working yarn around and coming over the needle in the back, pulling that yarn up through the loop and then pushing that stitch off the needle. Okay, so we're gonna do it again. We're gonna put our needle in from left to right. It's gonna be behind the left needle. The right needle is gonna be under the left needle. We're taking our working yarn, we're wrapping it around and over that needle, and we're gonna pull it through the stitch and slide the stitch off the needle. Do it again. We're gonna put it in from left to right. It's going under this left needle. We're wrapping our working yarn around the right hand needle and over it. We're pulling it through the stitch that's on the left needle and then we're gonna slide that stitch off the left needle. So now we have our stitches accumulating on the right, okay? So here we go again. We're gonna wrap it around, pull it through that loop <clears throat> and slide it off the needle. How are we doing? Okay, see the hole right there? That's what we're aiming for. From the left, it's gonna be underneath that left, the right, the left needle, oh my goodness. Underneath that, wrap it around, pull it through, okay? You're gonna continue to do this until all the stitches are on the right needle, okay? So here we go, one more time. See that stitch on here? We're gonna take our right hand needle, slide it through from left to right. It's under, our right hand needle is under the left hand needle. We're taking our working yarn, wrapping it around from behind and over the right hand needle, pulling that or pushing it through the loop and then sliding that stitch off, okay? Only got a few more to go. Let's continue. Here we go. You could do this. All right. This is called the knit stitch. It's just like your knitted cast on. Okay. Whoopsie. That's okay. There we go. Now let's count them. How did you do? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15. All right. If you wind up with more than 15, it's because at some point you wrapped the needle around, but usually the, the needle, the yarn around your needle before you worked from the front, but usually that happens when you're doing a purl stitch. I don't think that will happen now. Just keep track of your stitches. Okay, that was a niche stitch. Take a deep breath. <laughs> you guys wanna learn the purl stitch? It's the same thing, but backwards, you ready? We're gonna take our right hand needle. It's gonna stay in front of the left hand needle now. And it's gonna go in, the working yarn's gonna lay on top of it. It's gonna go in from the right to the left. We're gonna wrap the working yarn around the back of that right needle. And then pull it through the loop that's on the left needle. Let's see if I can explain that a little different, okay? So here we are. We're taking our right hand needle. We're putting from right to left, keeping it in front of that left hand needle, all right? Then we're taking our working yarn, wrapping it over, around and behind, and then pulling that right hand needle through that hole and then sliding that stitch off. Are you doing it? My screen keeps going blank because so I can't see. Here we go. Wrap it around. Whoop, whoop. Wrap it around. And then pull it through the hole. 
and then slide it off. How's it going? You could do this. Wrap it around. It's hard because I have the camera in the way. <laughs> and then slide it off. Okay. I think the trick is to kind of keep tension on it too. See how my, it's wrapped around my finger as I'm doing this? And I'm kind of still holding on to that yarn so it's not all willy-nilly and just easing along like so I'm not pulling out too much of it, if that makes sense. Now, the reason why I have that little elastic on the, um, oh, my thumb's in the way, hold on. The reason why that elastic is there on the towel, I'm gonna show you, because this way you can tell when you're gonna be doing a knit stitch and when you're gonna be doing a purl stitch, okay? I'm trying to get my thumb out of the way so you could see, and then it makes it hard to wrap it around for me. I don't know why. Is that happening for you? Here, hold on the bottom of the stitches. That might help. There. We're gonna learn this together. Because <laughs> it's kind of just rope, and it will become rope for you. Just give it time. I'm sure, it feels awkward. Pearl stitch is actually the most difficult stitch for people to learn. But if you learn it right away, you don't have a chance for it to be your most difficult sti stitch. But it does slow people up when they're trying to do the purl stitch, okay? So, come to the end here. And then I'm gonna show you a little trick. All right? Now, if we look at these stitches on our needle now, you'll see that there's bumps. These are little bumps, like, um, like pearl barley, you know, like a little bump. But if you look at it from this angle, I don't know if you could see that, but there's little V's as they come off. There's like little V's, okay? So what we want to do is put our elastic or a piece of tape or anything on the needle that when you look at it and the working yarn is on your right, you see these V's right here. Then you know that this is gonna be the right side, right? And this other side is the pearl side, which we'll do after. So let's do one more row of knit stitch, and then we'll do one more row of pearl stitch. Because I think we're getting close to the time for my mask to come off and I'm very happy that it has stayed on this whole time. Let's just make sure. Oh, there, I can see better. I'm trying to learn where I can look to see what I'm doing better than trying to look through the viewfinder. But I don't want to lean my head forward too much to get it in my mask in my eye. Speaking of masks, I sew my own masks and I have a bunch of masks because I have to wear one every day. I wear two, sometimes three, not together, but like I switch them out. Like after morning, after lunch, I'll put on a different one. Or after we're outside, I put, come in and put a different one on. Um, but they're getting to the point where I hear now that we should be making new ones or replacing some of the ones that we had from when we started. So I wanted to ask you, if you have masks, sewn masks that you've been using as well, how many do you have? And... Oh, I got a minute left on my timer. Now we're on the pearl side. See the bumps? These are the pearl bumps. So we're gonna pearl. How many masks do you generally wear during the week? And are you making more, buying more? It's a, I, I, every time I think I wanna make more, I'm thinking that we're gonna be done wearing masks and it's pretty soon we'll be done. It's, this is how I cope. I'm telling myself that. We have a contest at work going on where we guessed the date where we thought we'd be done wearing masks and we have it on a little post-it note behind, you know, one of our books that we're going to check later. But I think I was, uh, we we're totally off base. I thought we were going to be done a lot sooner with all these masks and things. So that's enough of the mask talk. <laughs> Let me know what you're doing, how many masks you have, and are you making more? Are you buying more? What's going on? I'm reluctant. <laughs> So that's that. But they do, they do keep us from getting the germs of the children. Oh, you hear it? Yes. 
Okay, time to take this off. Mm. I liked that one. I hate to use my fingers. I don't know why. How are you doing with the knitting? Do you know how to crochet? <laughs> I feel like Mask Monday for me is like Maker Monday, you know? Where we can, I'll tell you about my hobbies, if you don't mind, what I'm making. So remember I mentioned the masks and how many, look, this is my basket of masks. I have more that are in the wash downstairs. And I kind of like just cycle them out and grab them and have a little bag that I bring them to work in. But I'll show you a couple of them. The ch children like the Daniel Tiger mask. We have <laughs> rainbow fish, some balloon animals, cat in the hat, and this really pretty lake one. It's very serene, right? Relaxing, calming. And of course, you know, I have to have a chicken mask with roosters, right? So there, that's just a handful. And then I have different kinds that, you know, that come around the back of your neck. It depends on the day. If I'm wearing a ponytail, I tie this one on in my mood. And then when I didn't have elastic, you're gonna, you can forward fast through this part if you want. I actually did, I sewed some with little tabs on them that I use those clips that, I wonder if I thought I saw one right over here. No, I don't have it over here. Well, you know those clips that you kind of pop in your head, the little barrettes? When I put this on, I put the clip and kind of, you know, like clip my hair into it and then tie it around the back. Because I didn't have elastic for a little while there. We had that elastic shortage. I used this kind of stretchy jersey fabric that worked pretty nice too to tie it around my neck. And then did you know <laughs> that you can actually make like adjustable things with those? Put it around your ear with their slip knot that we learned from the knitted cast on and just slide this to adjust it. And then when I'm serving lunch or whatever, I can either use this to tie my hair in a pony <laughs> if I don't have one on my wrist or just gather it right up with it. Okay, enough of those. Those are my sewn masks. Let me show you my finished object. I love it. I didn't block it. I only had this much yarn left. So exciting. So this is my, I have to just weave in the ends. But if I block it, I want to leave the ends out and weave them in later. But look at this. What do you think? Oh, where's the end? So cozy, right? I'm so happy with it. There it is. I mean, you have to fiddle with it to get it to lay so it's not inside out, right? And sometimes I tie this underneath. You know, this type I'll tie underneath, but so cozy. I love it. Okay, so this is my little thing so far. I mean, you could actually, if you had the 15 and we're working with worsted weight, if we so if we made this double the length of our phones okay double the length of our phone and then we can sew up the edges and slide our phone into it i think for my phone i'd probably have to have like 20 stitches on here but this would also make a cute little when we do the square we can just set our coffee mug down on it because it's big enough for a coffee mug to sit on it and I have used dishcloth, a cotton yarn, but that tends to be a little more rough on your hands in the beginning. But I have used the dishcloth fabric to make little washable, you know, things to wash your dishes with or little rounds to wash your face with. So that's that. All right. Let me know how you're doing with the knitting and if, it's, if you have any questions with it, if you're understanding it. Okay. And I guess I will see you next Monday for Mask Monday. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Have a great week. I'll see you Monday, if not sooner. Bye.